TikTok, time to rock. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon to everyone who's watching from all over the world. I'm your friendly neighborhood philosopher, D. Wood. And with me now is Thaddeus. Uh, what kind of name is Thaddeus? That would be a biblical name. Yeah, I know, but I've only known like one <laughs> other Thaddeus my whole life. So it seems like one of those names that died out. Yeah, my parents like unique names. So my sister and I, we both have unique names. Yeah, that's cool. All our all our kids have uh, have weird names. Uh, just check, I want to check audio levels here at the beginning before uh, everyone um, uh, before we continue. And then someone tells me like thirty minutes into it that our audio levels are horribly uh, horribly different or something like that. Uh, do we sound roughly roughly in the same ballpark? Go ahead and tell everyone about your uh, about your channel here before we get started, Daddy, so people can. Yeah. Well, first of all, thank you very much for having me on. I'm very excited to be here. Uh, maybe we'll get a little bit of chance to talk about my personal story, but David Wood is the reason that I got interested in Islam. So I started my channel a little over three years ago. Didn't know at, at the time I started, I wasn't sure if I was going to you know, talk about Islam or just talk about Christian apologetics. And I ended up that the Lord kept guiding me towards talking about Islam. So my channel is about, probably about 80% focused on Islam and 20% straight Christian apologetics. All right. Um, why don't you, well, you, now you opened the door. Uh, so let's go <laughs> ahead and, and get a little, um, little background on your story. Before we get started, before we get started there, no, there's a, there's a, there's the elephant in the room. Namely the guy who stole Hatun's Quran. Did y'all see that? Did, did y'all catch that? That uh, at Speaker's Corner, someone stole Hatun's Quran. Someone stole Hatun's Quran, and then uh, police arrested Hatun for it, <laughs> because that's that's just how they roll. <laughs> that's just how they roll, apparently, in the UK. What what m many people don't know is that that was the Quran that they stole was the Quran I gave to Hatun. I I could be wrong about why I gave that to her. I believe that someone stole her Quran one day before that, and that I sent her a custom D. Wood Quran as a gift to make up for the one that was stolen. So now they stole the Quran that was a gift because they stole another Quran. Notice, the Quran that they just stole would never have been made if they hadn't stole the other Quran, right? If they hadn't stole the first Quran, that Quran would never have been made. And what's, wild, what's just absolutely wild here What's absolutely wild is these guys don't know how many Qurans I have, right? I mean, they don't know how many Qurans I have to make more custom Qurans. I mean, look at, I mean, they're, they're just, they're all, they're all over the place. I mean, so this is, this is Arabic, of course. Then if you want, you know, with the English, with the English trans, you know, with the English and Arabic, you've got like the Yusuf Ali, um, you got study Qurans, like, um, you know, I have the study Quran, then I have the critical Quran by Robert Spencer. Then, then, oh my goodness. You, got, you guys haven't even seen Qurans. You don't even know Qurans. You don't even know Qurans, man. You do not know. I save this. I keep these in store for occasions just such as this one. Occasions just like this. I mean, my goodness. This thing's as big as I am. Look at this. Look at this Quran. You see this? They seriously want me to customize this as only I can, and then Hatun to show up at Speaker's Corner. And when they see me give this to Hatun as a gift, then they'll want to steal it, knowing for a fact that I will just send 10 more. For, <laughs> it's like, it's it's so, ins <laughs> it's just weird, man. This is weird stuff, right? And 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 most most people don't don't seem to get it. The, the, the few people that get it are people like uh, like Sajid, right? Like Sajid will respond, he'll, he'll, if he sees this situation, he'll go, guys, why are you stealing her Quran? You know what David Wood is going to do. Why are you doing it? He'll get it, right? But it's always, hey, let's do this thing. And we know how people are going to react, but let's do it anyway, even though it will result in, uh, you know, uh, desecration of something or blasphemy against something. And, and it's weird. It's like they want us to do it deep down. They want us to do it. Anyway, weird situation. All right. Just wanted you guys to know, I, I've already invited Hatun on to uh, talk about what, what happened. Um, so we'll, we'll see, we'll see uh, if she's free sometime this week and I'll, I'll go live with Hatun and we'll watch some video clips and so on. But right now we wanted to get to um, some channels and some video clips, but Thaddeus, you mentioned uh, your background, so give us the condensed version. Yeah, I'll give you the brief version. So I 
became a Christian as a teenager, grew up in a Christian household, uh, but never really heard the gospel. Grew up in a, a legal church that, that talked a lot about morality. No doubt that's not that uncommon, that, that children are taught primarily morality. They're not necessarily taught the gospel. But after I heard the gospel as a teenager, I uh, accepted Jesus as my personal Savior. And within a, a short amount of time, I don't remember exactly how, but I became introduced to apologetics. So that was some 20 plus years ago. So I, I'm i very naturally uh, introvert, very shy. Um, I only talk to people I know. And so I would have never imagined, you know, like starting a YouTube channel or something. So how did that happen? Well, I was watching a YouTube video, I believe it was actually a Ravi Zacharias video. And someone put in the comments that their favorite apologist was David Wood. Smart. I'd ne- <laughs> Indeed they were. Indeed they were. I had never heard of him before that. So I went over to his channel and naturally the first thing I watched was his testimony video. One of the greatest videos ever created, in my opinion. And I was instantly very hooked on his content, very interested in what he had to say because of that video. So I started watching other videos, and of course, they're mostly about Islam. Before this, uh, since I you know, had a background in apologetics, I knew some basic arguments against Islam, certainly more than the average Christian would. But I also was very ignorant about Islam. For example, I didn't even know there was a Hadith. It was like, okay, Christians have the Bible, Muslims have the Quran. Um, So I I began to learn about Islam. And as a Christian apologist, one of my favorite things to study was always the historical argument for Christianity, the idea that you can prove or disprove Christianity based on historical inquiry. And that's not true of most religions. Most religions are very uh, immaterial, that they have religious ideas, they make claims about the spiritual world, but you can't really disprove or prove them from a historical standpoint because the the founder or reputed founder is rather irrelevant to the religion. But Islam is different. Uh, Islam, like Christianity, if you disprove the foundational events of the, the religion, then it obviously must be false. Of course, that's not the only reason why something can be false, but it's a reason that was especially interesting to me. So I began to realize that Islam was something that I, I wanted to study and uh, you know, was growing interested because of David Wood. At some point, YouTube recommended me an Islam critiqued video. This is actually before David promoted Colin the first time. He only had maybe like 1,500 subs at that time, maybe even less than 1,000. And I went over there, and because his channel was super small at that time, I was able to have a per- start having personal conversations with him, and I ended up befriending him. I told him in private conversation that I was having, that I was doing a, a apologetics type talk at my church, you know, for a dozen people. And that that's the extent of my my desire to talk to people. A dozen was pushing it, and uh, he said, you know, if if you're doing it anyway, you might as well record it and put it up on YouTube. So uh, I didn't actually record it live. I I recorded it later, re-giving it to the camera, but uh, that's actually how I got started. Colin was kind enough to interview me, guide me my start, gave me my first 50 subs or so. The, as I as I started to you know develop the channel, and that video had nothing to do with Islam, obviously. That was actually on the problem of evil, on suffering. and. Uh, as I began to work on the channel, they, I continued to, to realize just how much need there is to outreach to Islam. That uh, most of Christian apologetics is focused on atheism. A- atheists represent, you know, five percent of the world population at best, and you know, like a hundred million people. Meanwhile, there are one and a half billion close to 2 billion even Muslims in the world now. And virtually no one was doing outreach to, to Islam, to outreach to Muslims. So it started to realize, you know, there's an abundant need. And uh, I don't know about anyone else, but I actually find conversations with atheists to be extremely boring. They always go the same way. You give some sort of argument. Oh, they declare that doesn't count as evidence. Therefore, there is no evidence. Therefore, they win. And it, it just kind of goes in a circle. So. Uh, at least personally, it made a lot more sense for me to be interested in Islam. So started making videos on that, and here we are today. 
All right, and I, I just wanted to add one little thing to what you said. You uh, you mentioned that you're uh, <clears throat> introverted, and so what mm -hmm. would you be doing on YouTube? Uh, I just wanted to tell any uh, potential future YouTubers out there, uh, it's actually perfect for introverts, right? Sitting here, you know, I, I, I'm in my room with my camera right now, right? There's no one else here. There's no one else here. It's perfect, right? You're talking to a camera. Uh, so if you don't like being in crowds, you like being to yourself, my goodness, YouTube's perfect. You could have, you know, you could have discussions with nothing in there but a camera. So works out, works out perfectly. Now, um, so uh, just to bring everyone up to date, a little while back, I announced that I'd be uh, deleting my YouTube channel. And at first I think I said June, but then uh, my friend Jorge pointed out that it would be funnier on July 4th, Independence Day for all of you who don't know what July 4th is here in the US. Um, so I went with July 4th and I, a while back, I posted a video inviting people to uh, recommend channels that I should promote before I go. And I said, you know, specifically what I'm looking for is channels that are under, uh, underrated, meaning, you know, they, given the quality of the content, they should have more followers than they do. And sometimes that'll just, you know, that because people haven't been on very long or people haven't caught on, um, it's actually, there's so much content on YouTube, it can be kind of difficult to get started. So we're looking for people to give a little push. And then people gave a ton of recommendations. A lot of those recommendations were for what I wasn't looking for, namely people who already have big channels or people who are already well known. So they don't, you know, there's, I mean, I could get probably get them a few more subscribers or something like that, but there are already people, there are a lot of people who are already well known. Uh, and then fortunately Thaddeus went ahead and compiled the data. So it looks like you sifted through everything and then you ranked everything. And then it looks like you took out the ones that are already pretty well known uh, to narrow it down to channels that a lot of people were recommending, but that still, um, most people still didn't know about, even though they had people, even though they had their fans here who were recommending them, uh, there's still a lot of room for, uh, for people who haven't heard of them. And so you kind of narrowed that down. Uh, so we want to go through some of the ones that were on. So you kind of, you kind of combined the criteria and came up with the list. So we're, and you went above and beyond that you put together, you sent me a uh, video clips, short couple minute clips from each one of these channels to give people an idea of what to expect on those channels. So that's, that's the purpose of this live stream. Everyone, uh, we're looking at some of these, uh, some of the channels that people recommended. Uh, and again, these, these channels were recommended saying, guys, you should check out this channel. And I understand not every, not every person likes every kind of channel. So that's what, that's the point of taking a look at the channel, taking a look at the video clips. And then we've got, we've got the links in the description box. You can go to those channels, uh, and see if you like them, but you'll, you'll get an idea if you like them from the video clips we're about to look at. So now Thaddeus, you were not at the, you weren't at the top. We're looking at you first, but I don't, we're not claiming that you were first on the list, right? We're putting you first because- Yeah, that, that's correct. To, to be fair, I would have been about 10th on the list. And so I wouldn't have actually made the list if I, if I hadn't gone ahead and sent you the data, but I get to jump to the top because- That's, that's because a perk. That. That's a perk for doing, for putting in the work. All right, so should we check out, uh, should we check out uh, a video clip yes go ahead let me see even though i've been using this program for years now i'm still terrible at technology all right now guys some of these some of the volume levels on these clips are going to be lower than we're speaking and uh i won't be able to adjust them all because they're coming from all people you know deep, different people's uh uh recordings and so on so we'll uh we'll do the best we can here we have reasoned answers Recently, Lloyd de Jong and myself had a show exploring the long history of silly, contradictory, and blatantly ahistorical Muslim claims about the Apostle Paul. We opened up the stream for Muslim responses and were joined by Safras Hussein. Did he respond to the various Muslim scholars we quoted that espoused utter nonsense, confusing Paul with King Saul, thinking Constantine was the son of Pontius Pilate, and so forth? Of course not. What I'm suggesting is that one particular type of Muslim is a habitual liar. The type who disputes with Christians in YouTube comments as a form of dawah. And as we're about to see, there's a reason why they act this way. 
a quick internet search will reveal that lying is forbidden in Islam. To us, that's a clear moral command. However, we have to understand Islam as well-informed Muslims understand it. Islam is not a religion based on moral principles. It's a religion based on rules. Or put differently, a religion of laws and lawyers. The Quran is not the ultimate authority in Islam. The scholarly consensus, that is the opinion of the lawyers, on how to interpret the Quran and the Sunnah is the ultimate authority. Wow. As such, we need to turn to the legal, or Sharia, guides to understand Islam. Let's take a look at what Reliance of the Traveler, the most popular such manual, states on lying. This is an explicit statement that lying is sometimes permissible for a given interest. If lying achieves a good end, tricking non-Muslims or smoothing over a relationship, it is a good thing to do. The end justifies the means. Uh huh. But actually, it gets worse. Reliance explains. When it is possible to achieve such an aim by lying, but not by telling the truth, it is permissible to lie if attaining the goal is permissible, and obligatory to lie if the goal is obligatory. So, lying is not just permissible, but obligatory if the outcome is obligatory and truth won't accomplish the desired end. Is it obligatory for Muslims to wage war on non-Muslims? Yes. Yes. Is it obligatory for Muslims to give dawah? Yes. Yes. Is it obligatory to continue until all the world has converted to Islam, or at least agreed to acknowledge their inferiority and live as subjugated people? Yes. Yes. Yes! So the end is obligatory. But how can Muslims accomplish that end? Can they convince anyone to convert to Islam by telling the truth? Absolutely not. Islam is morally depraved and intellectually bankrupt. The only possible way to get an average person to convert is to trick them. Well, that was pretty much the most racist thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah, you know, I am an Islamophobe. It's okay. Um, I saw you grinning throughout your video, too. Is that just, a, is that just your normal look, or... Are you one of these guys who, like, is amused at himself? <laughs> well, I, I do uh, chuckle at my videos a little as I'm editing them. I, I, I won't lie. Uh, but I also am pretty fun-loving in general. So it's not just my videos that I, I chuckle at. I, I chuckle at a lot of videos. Here we have from Sunny Sparkles. They always pick on St. Paul. Paul is an amazing man, and he didn't hook up with a six-year-old. That is true. Um, yeah, in fact, I have a I have an entire series from way back in the day um, called Paul versus Muhammad. I think it's like 26, 26 or 27 video series or something like that. But it was, uh, yeah, I just went down the line comparing Paul and Muhammad in every possible way I could compare them. And in every, every relevant way you can compare two people in terms of their reliability, Paul wins. And you put it all together, my goodness. And I say at the end, that's funny because, I mean, Paul's not even our main guy. <laughs> so a guy who's not even our main guy is vastly superior to Islam's only guy. It's the only guy they got. All right. <laughs> uh, let me pull up, uh, let me pull up your, let me pull up your channel here. Reasoned answers. Let's take a look at what you got here. All right. So here we have reason answers. Looks like you have just under 10,000 subscribers. Yes, that's actually a very relevant observation because earlier today I posted on my community page. I said that I was prophesying between three and nine hours from then that I would hit 10,000 subscribers. So if everyone wants to go over there and prove that I am just as good of a prophet as Allah, it's the best prophecy, if we can even count it as a prophecy, <laughs> just like just like uh, for me, you know, it wasn't exactly a hard prediction to make since I knew that I'd be on this channel today. Uh, so, yeah, uh, there you have it. And you have the link is in the description box and uh, people have been sharing it uh, in the chat as well. But yeah, any of the links of the channels we're checking out uh, should be in the description box. So here we have reason answers, just checking out 
deconstructing Dawa tactics, rhetoric, distraction, deception, the beauty of Sharia. See? Busted. We caught you talking about the beauty of Sharia. Uh, five dumbest claims about Islam, refuting Islam in one word, Mormonism. My goodness. It's getting doubly racist in here. <laughs> How Islam... Well, I don't, I don't know if... Uh critiquing mormonism can be racist though because that i know they're the whitest they're the whitest people in the world but <laughs> i'm just going with the idea that any minority religion is a race um and then we have hey hey there we have some stuff with me i see my i see my face and some stuff there and uh, so anyway ladies and gentlemen uh, i'm just putting these topics up here so you could see which of these topics uh, you might be interested in and you could check those out and again link to the channel is in the description box. All right, so final quick appeal, Thaddeus, why should people subscribe to your channel? Yeah, I, I would say that um, uh, about a year ago, I took some time off and when I came back uh, in December, I, since I've come back in December, I've been being much more intentional about the way I do things. I'm getting really interested in editing my videos, um, pr providing you know, some fun little elements to them. And I think I, I wouldn't say that my early content is necessarily like the best in the world, but I would say that I, I'm, I feel a lot better <laughs> about my con content recently. I've been putting a lot of effort to it. And I think that it, it's really paying off. Um, even before today, there was definitely a lot of momentum building, a lot of people saying positive things about it. And um, even more importantly, I know of two Muslims who have told me that they personally personally told me that they came to the Lord as a result of the content so all right well there you have reason answers now what's next on our list of channels that people need to check out so the the most recommended channel just to be clear was Christian Prince but that obviously doesn't qualify so the most recommended channel that actually fit the criteria was God logic apologetics God logic so and God logic I think mo most people who heard of God Logic only heard about him recently uh, with the interaction with uh, with Sheikh Uthman. So should we go ahead and check out check out a clip from that? Yes, let's do that. All right, and God Logic, I, I did see God Logic in the chat, right? Yes, he okay. was here at least at the start. All right, let's check out a clip from God Logic here. Since I just started my platform, nice. what I like to do is try to show how interfaith dialogue, even though we fundamentally disagree on everything, basically. Everything? Not just, everything. I said basically. On, I said basically. We both believe there is a God. We do. Okay. So but we don't dis that's what I said basically. Even though we have, let's say, many. Sure. Many fundamental, fundamental disagreements. disagreements. We can still do this. Sure. Laugh as we're just talking, yep. dapping it up, yep. chopping it up, yep. and I want more Christians and Muslims who see this stuff to be able to have these conversations without the malice, without the, uh, we got to one up you and right. yada, yada, yada. I like, agree. so I, I had a question Go for it. Um, about the Messiah. All right. So from, from the Islamic perspective, okay. what does Messiah mean? So you're talking about Messiah, right? Mm -hmm. Messiah is like a messenger, somebody who comes to guide people and to bring them a message and be a, a, a basically a instrument of guidance for people, okay. right? So for example, they have the false messiah, Messiah Dajjal, yeah. right? Now he's got his own message, but his message is a false message, yeah. right? So Isa ibn Maryam, for example, he was the one that came and he guided people towards the truth, right? right? So he can be called a messiah in that sense. So my question then would be, uh, then, could Muhammad or even Noah or any of the other prophets count as being messiahs? So in Arabic, we use two terms, right? We use for prophet and rasul, right? Uh, one is Nabi, Nabi and one is rasul, rasul yeah. right? You already know this stuff. A little bit. Right. I'm learning a little bit. So every prophet who, who is chosen is Mustafa, right? Mustafa, like the one who's chosen, is going to be a prophet. But not every one of them will be a rasul. Right. Right? Because Rasul gets Risala. Mm -hmm. They get the message. a message revealed to mm -hmm. them. Right? So Islamically, yes, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, because he had the Suhuf, Isa, Jesus, Ibn Maryam, Ani, those are all Rusul. And you can call them in that sense Messiahs as well. 
Okay, so you can call the other sure. prophets messiahs. Why not? So why aren't they called messiahs? They are. I mean, what do you mean they are not? So, okay, so Muhammad, I Noah, and these, these, these other prophets, they're right. called messiahs? You could call them messiahs if you like. I mean, what do you, what do you mean they're not called? So nowhere do we find, we only find Jesus being identified as the messiah. Where? In the Quran and the Hadith. All right, very good. So go to uh, First Corinthians for me, chapter two. Go for it. Here you go. You don't know where it is, know where man. You got. All uh, right, uh, go I, to I, I it, go man. To I was just trying to help you. Wrong out. way, man. Got to go the other <laughs> way. Corinthians in the New Testament. Shake. I got you. I got you. Relax. Uh, we've gone over Corinthians many a time. All right, good. You should know where it is. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> uh, so it, for anyone who doesn't know what happened in the follow-up. I don't, I don't even think I saw that. I think I saw one of the, one of the follow-up videos that was discussing, uh, matter of fact, I think it was the DCCI video. Uh, where did I see that? Where did I, where yeah, did I see yeah. the video? That, that was, uh, uh, um, uh, they were discussing Sheikh Uthman's response where he brought, he was supposedly bringing a hadith where other people can be called uh, messiahs and it was actually a footnote or something like that. And so his defense, I guess, was, oops, he made a mistake when if you talk to if you talk to Sheikh Uthman, he's doing this all the time. He's constantly he's one of the people. And this is just very common for lots of people. The 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 idea seems to be say whatever you need to say in the moment to win your point even if it can be totally refuted later on, just hope that no one bothers to actually come in and point out that you were misrepresenting things. And this is the reason it would be common for someone like Sheikh Uthman is that video is po pretty recent uh, for him to be focusing on. For years, he's just doing dawah. And if you got people coming up to you on the street, you're not gonna see most, I mean, or, or at a park, you're not gonna see most of these people again. So you can kind of say whatever you want, right? You can just make things up all you need to. And so looks like he was thinking, oh, here's a guy and I can make something up and, oh, he came back, but this guy's not going to know any better. So I can say whatever I want. I can make things up. And then he got busted for it. And oops, my bad. And so it, it's a situation where there are only two possibilities. Either he knew what he was doing. He was deliberately deceptive. He was deliberately lying. Or he's incredibly, incredibly ignorant of, you know, I mean, if you can't tell the difference between a hadith and a footnote, um, you got some problems there. All right. So, uh, what, what do you, what, what are your thoughts on uh, God logic apologetics? Yeah. Well, uh, just briefly to add to what you said about the uh, footnote controversy. So Avery, that, that's uh, God logic's actual name. He went back then the next week. Ufman, even though he said I'll bring you multiple books, he brings them a single piece of paper that he printed out, and he's what he did is he combined a, a hadith and a footnote. In Arabic, but the Arabic portion that he claimed was Messiah was actually a typo, and actually didn't even say Messiah. Oh wow! It, it said uh, "beautiful Sharia" is what it said, and there was a, a typo that made it look like it said Messiah, and he claimed that 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 it was a proof of what he had said, even though the Hadith had absolutely nothing to do with the Messiah. The footnote, if you actually read it, he he surely knew that it um, was talking about the Sharia law. So. But the reason that uh, I chose this clip, first of all, I put that little, first little portion because, uh, you know, that's where Avery makes his declaration of what his channel is all about. And then, of course, the the, the dialogue with Ufman, um, because that's what has made him famous. His channel is only, you know, a month or two old, and it's already up to like five or 6,000 subscribers. So because of that, because of utterly exposing Ufman, he's absolutely blowing up but still you know relatively small and it also is representative of what he does in general he has live streams where he invites muslims on and he has very friendly conversations with them jokes around has a lot of fun while making a serious point getting them to actually think about what they're, they're saying and he he's very good at asking good questions you could see that in the ufman video as well he's not arguing with ufman he's just ar asking him questions and you know he forces him in to this situation where he makes something up just by asking good questions and that again that's something that you can do uh just by asking Sheikh Uthman questions um again it, the natural inclination is to say whatever I need to say so so think about the situation here ladies and gentlemen um 
the, the, the underlying problem is that Jesus is identified as Messiah and the, the Islamics, they have no clue what this means. They have no clue what this means, right? So why is Jesus the Messiah? What, what, is, what is different about him? Um, and you can make something up, right? You can make something up about the word Messiah and say, aha, this is why Jesus is the unique Messiah. Or you can say, well, uh, yeah, other people can be Messiahs too. Um, in which case you, you got some, you, you got to defend that point and looks, just looks like Sheikh, Sheikh Uthman has earned his name, Sheikh Ibn Fibbin, because again, ladies and gentlemen, two possibilities here. Either he knows, either he knew he was lying because keep in mind, I mean, he, he's, he's, I've seen pictures of him in his library. He's got all the books. Why in the world do you bring in a, a, a you know, a printout of a page unless you're deliberately messing around with it? Um, but, uh, notice, uh, a, a brand new guy that until very recently, most of us had never heard of, God logic here, Avery, uh, was able in a very short amount of time to expose Sheikh Uthman for making things up and get him to admit that he had at least made a mistake. He tried to downplay it. He's not, he's not, uh, he's not deceptive. Um, but very quickly, very quickly got Sheikh Uthman to embarrass himself. And then even though, even though, uh, even though God Logic here is showing up and saying, "Hey, you know, we, we can get along while we're investigating these things," uh, people eventually started thugging out on him. Right? Weren't they, weren't they, didn't they go into thug mode after this? I recall some. I recall some clip about that. Does that sound familiar? Did yeah, thug I think mode so. Uh, I didn't actually watch that video, but I did see it and the, the recommended. So I know what you're talking about. Yeah. All right. So let's take a peek at. Uh, Let's take a peek at God Logic's channel here. God Logic Apologetics. 6,340 subscribers. Um, so he's got at the top here Sheikh Uthman versus God Logic. And let's see. Live discussion with Muslims. So he has live discussions on his channel. Um, you mentioned his discussions earlier. Uh, does the Quran deny the crucifixion? How to prove to a Muslim that the Bible is from God? Interesting stuff. The God Logic Project. All Muslims are invited. Sheikh Uthman Ibn Farouk. Final footnote. Lie. Open discussion. All Muslims invited. So uh, looks like he yeah regularly uh, invites Muslims for. My goodness, is that a six and a half hour open discussion? That's de that's, that's dedication right there, right at the top there, uh, towards the middle. The God Logic Project. All Muslims invited. Six hours and thirty three minutes. That would, I don't know what my, I think my record is like four hours or something like that. Uh, and then I think I'm at the bottom of the page already. Yeah, I mean, it's a brand new channel. Okay, so, so. brand new. Well, that's uh, that's actually pretty rapid growth then. Yeah, so you're, you're, you're right. It was the, uh, it was the Shake of Month thing because um, 6,300 subscribers uh, may not seem like a lot, but for a channel that just started, that's a lot. That's a lot. You're, oh, I mean, yeah. you're, right. you're by far your heart, the hardest thousand subscribers to ever get is your first thousand subscribers. Um, and so, yeah, it took me somewhere around two and a half to three years to hit 6,000. So, yeah. All right. So, uh, all right, Thaddeus, final yep. thoughts. Why should people subscribe to God logic? Uh, I would just say to to subscribe to him because if you like live streams, if you like dialogue with Muslims, uh, subscribe there because uh, he has very friendly conversations. They're they're not, you know. Sometimes the, these things get into like shouting matches and such. Uh, they don't go that way on his channel. You actually have good conversations. All right, so that's God Logic, ladies and gentlemen. Um, he's uh, he's in the chat as well, so you have the link to his channel. Be sure to check him out. And I mean, if if I were those of you who are watching, I probably unless you unless you see a clip from someone and you're just like, oh, I can't stand that guy's uh, approach or something like that. We'll probably go ahead and subscribe to everyone we're talking about now, and then so you get a, so you get some recommendations, and then check him out. And then if you don't like him, then later on, um, you know, later on you can later on you can unsubscribe. All right. So uh, God Logic here says thank you guys. I appreciate you, David and Thaddeus. No problem. And so who do we have next, Thaddeus? So next on the list is Testify. And this is a channel that I I think I had seen like once or twice before you asked for recommendations, but it wasn't a channel I was subscribed to. It wasn't a channel I watched. So it's a perfect example. And 
it's a uh, straight Christian apologetics. It's not about Islam. So the fact that your audience was recommending it really suggests a lot. Yeah, that's interesting because I'm not I'm not familiar with the channel. Um, but yeah, uh, people were recommending it. So that means some people are watching it. All right. So should we check out Testify? Yep. Here we go. When were the Gospels written? Most scholars say that the Gospel of Mark dates between 66 through 70 AD, Matthew and Luke around 85 to 90, and John 90 to 100. Skeptics like Bart Ehrman imply that they're too late to be reliable, as a decades-long time gap leaves plenty of room for myths and legends to creep in. When it comes to history, chronological closeness matters, but where exactly are critics coming up with these later dates? When you dive into the literature, you find that many biblical scholars date Matthew, Mark, and Luke past 70 AD for one main reason, Jesus' prophecies regarding the destruction of Jerusalem and its temple. The so-called scholarly theory is that Jesus never said these things, they were put into his mouth to make him out to be an amazing prophet. Yes, I'm serious. Almost the entire late dating scheme is primarily based on the question-begging, anti-supernaturalistic premise that Jesus could have never prophesied the coming devastation of Jerusalem in such detail. Prophecy is on par with leprechauns and unicorns. But there's a growing chorus of scholars who challenge these assumptions, and they're not all hardcore Christians. Even some atheist scholars like Maurice Casey or James Crossley have challenged late dating. Well, why is that? For starters, if you know anything about Israel's history, Jerusalem's downfall had happened before in 586 BC. Let's take a look at 2 Kings 25, 8 through 10. It reads, On the seventh day of the fifth month, in the nineteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, commander of the imperial guard and official of the king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem. He set fire to the temple of the Lord, the royal palace, and all the houses of Jerusalem. Every important building he burned down. The whole Babylonian army under the commander of the imperial guard broke down the walls of Jerusalem. It's these kind of details, the burning of the temple and the seizures of the walls, that some say can only be described after 70 AD, but they happened before. God's prophets were often the announcers of the curse of the law for disobeying God's commandments. Jeremiah said Jerusalem would be destroyed because of their sin, and Jesus followed suit. As New Testament scholar C.H. Dodd has pointed out, so far as any historical event has colored the picture, it is not Titus' capture of Jerusalem in 70 AD, but Nebuchadnezzar's capture in 586 BC. There is no single trait of the forecast which cannot be documented directly out of the Old Testament. Second, Luke points out that a little-known prophet named Agabus prophesied the famine coming during the days of Emperor Claudius. This was fulfilled in the 40s. But Jesus, the earth-shattering main figure of his gospel, foretells the destruction of Jerusalem and all we get is crickets? This seems a bit odd to say the least. Why doesn't Luke say Jesus' words were fulfilled in the days of Emperor Titus? I have a theory, and hear me out on this one, maybe because the fulfillment hadn't happened yet. Finally, Jesus' words regarding the temple's destruction doesn't make a lot of sense unless they happen before the event. In Mark's Gospel, Jesus says that when people see the abomination of desolation, they should flee to the mountains. Mark and Matthew say that Jesus commanded them to pray that it doesn't happen in winter. Matthew includes pray that it doesn't happen on the Sabbath. Luke says when Jerusalem was surrounded by armies, let those who are inside the city depart, and let not those who are out in the country enter in it. Here's the thing. We know from history that Titus destroyed the temple in late summer. Why pray that something doesn't happen at a particular time if it already happened? And what's the point of Luke adding a warning about not entering into the city if the city was already ruined? The late dating scenario is built on a flimsy foundation. It's no wonder that E.P. Sanders, not a particularly conservative scholar, has concluded that there is no material in Mark which must be dated after 70 AD. Interesting stuff. Uh, do you know our... our uh... You checked out the channel. Are, are most of the videos like that with the? Uh, with yeah. The, the so graphics? this is the channel of Eric Manning, and most of the videos are on the subject of New Testament reliability. That seems to be uh, his main focus, and most of them are uh, this kind of beautiful animation style. Uh, and someone pointed out, uh, Baseball King here said, uh, "Testify is also on TikTok," and. That makes sense because I see uh, I see a video there of him with uh, inspiring philosophy, talking about bringing Christian sanity to TikTok. So, by the way, everyone, uh, inspiring philosophy is also on TikTok. So that makes sense. So we got uh, some TikTokers here. Let's go ahead and check out this channel. Welcome to Testify. Um, got some helpful channels here. Huh? I don't see my channel listed. I guess. <laughs> I guess I'm not helpful. <laughs> then we got shorts. Uh, makes sense to be making shorts because uh, I think you could do double duty with those on TikTok. You can make a you can make a short for YouTube and then uh, the same format for 
TikTok. Uh, all right, so the historical reliability of the Gospels. Yes, Josephus really mentions Jesus. Yes, Tacitus mentions the historical Jesus five times. Archaeology silenced critics. Uh, the Gospel authors knew local geography. Okay, looks like, I mean, yeah, this looks like some, uh, this looks like good stuff here. Yeah, I mean, it, it's interesting that I had never heard of this channel because it especially aligns with my interest. You know, it's all mm -hmm. about the, the reliability, about these um, historical arguments. He makes these uh, careful arguments, drawing on scholarship and answering objective or answering objections from uh, skeptics and so forth. So I really enjoy it. <clears throat> yeah, I just uh, I just had Jonathan McClatchy on um discussing the uh the maximal data maximal data approach to uh defending the resurrection because you have a couple different ways that people can go and we discussed that in that live stream but looks like um uh down here in the bottom corner we see learn to make a maximal case for the resurrection and we saw jonathan mcclatchy's uh channel linked up here oh and lydia mcgrew so yeah so it gives us kind of an idea and it makes sense with um defending the historical reliability of the new testament and so on that uh that that would be his approach so everyone um you've got you've got the link in the description box to testify and all right thaddeus final thoughts on testify why people should subscribe yeah, I'd say if you're interested in making objective arguments for audiences that, um, you know, don't necessarily believe in the reliability of the Bible from the start, to definitely go here because the historical argument is very powerful and his videos are very enjoyable to watch. All right. And uh, going back to uh, L here had a comment on God Logic. Uh, she said, been doing this for years and I'm nowhere near that reach. So his work is seriously paying off. Praise God. She's commenting on how uh, rapidly his channel uh, has been growing. But L, I think you're getting a boost here pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What are you laughing at? You don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, you might. I don't know. I don't know what anyone knows. <laughs> All right. What do we have I, next? I just... I huh? just thought you meant from putting the comment up and saying that she has a channel. <laughs> no, 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 no. We can do we can do bigger things than that. <laughs> okay, I don't know what you're talking about then. So. <laughs> all right, <laughs> um, all right. Who do we have next? Uh, so next up on the list is Adam Seeker. Adam actually has two channels. He has an English channel and he has an Urdu language channel. He's an ex-Muslim convert to Christianity from Pakistan. So he speaks Urdu as his first language. And I uh, I say this in all genuineness, that I think that his Urdu channel is probably one of the most important Christian channels on YouTube because there are very few people who can reach uh, people who speak that language. And it's such a, it's such a massive, such a massive audience. Um, like m my second biggest source of views on by country uh at the top my my biggest source of views is the united states second is india so there is there is a hunger out in that part of the world for information uh on these topics and so someone who's actually doing it in urdu uh big 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 help all right should we check out a clip from uh from adam seeker absolutely and since we are english speakers we will check out an english clip here Adam Seeker. So everyone, uh, Adam Seeker has an English channel and an Urdu channel. Hello, 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 everyone. This is your favorite Murtad. Live once again. And today we are going to have some fun. His camel kneeled down and dismounted and lay his head on my lap and slept. Abu Bakr came to me and hit me violently on the chest now that makes sense you know how, why it makes sense because here in arabic they can't do much because it says shadida it says shadida let me show you let me show you let me show you mm -hmm. okay abu bakar shadida check this out And Abu Bakr hit me hard. Shadidatan. 
Shadidatan. Now here, they can't do much about it because how can you pinch with hardness? How can you pinch with violent? Violent pinch. There cannot be violent pinch. Now, I'm going to share the link for the Muslim. Let's see if a Muslim brother or sister can come up and tell us why the father of his wife was beating his wife violently and Muhammad did not do jack. I have given you a simple question. You call me brother, whereas your Quran says don't even take Jews and Christians as your friends. Now, let me add you in and I will allow you to speak. And if you speak nicely, we can have a reasonable discussion. If you keep on barking like a dog, this is what is going to happen. And then you will run away like a dog with the tail behind his legs. Let me add you in. You have heard me clearly. Are you going to be nice or are you going to act like Muhammad? You will be acting the way you're going to be acting. You give me a thing. I am to, acting. Don't, don't I cut did me not off. abuse you. See, you. Your God or the fact he's... Okay. Get lost. Now you are banned from studio. Bye-bye, you demon-possessed Muhammadan. All right, guys, let's see. It says, children of Adam, Ya Bani Adam. If there come to you a messenger from your relating to you, my verses, who comes to you? Who comes to you? A messenger relating my verses to you. Then whosoever fears Allah and reforms, there will be no fear concerning them, nor will they grieve. Now imagine, he shows the true face of Muhammad. Muhammad says, go bite the penis of your father. This guy talks about MF and F and F and F and F and F. So many places. All right, and uh, uh, I've seen several people point out that the first thing I was thinking uh, when I was watching that, uh, which is uh, seeking the narrow way, said he reminds me of Christian Prince. Uh, it seems like a uh, seems like a, a very similar approach, and an important approach in terms of uh, just constantly putting their sources up on the screen and then uh, preempting the lies and deception about it that they would that, see. If we were to bring that up, they would, you know, Thaddeus and I don't have a, a good background in Arabic. And so they would, ah, oh, what that really means is this, you know, these 57 different things that the word can mean. And let me go with the one that I'm going to use in this situation and so on. And so you have uh, <clears throat> Christian Prince and uh, Adam Seeker uh, putting their sources up and breaking down the Arabic and, and exposing, uh, exposing the lies. So what do you think, Thaddeus? Yeah, just for a little context, the reason that he was talking about it can't be pinch is he first started with a hadith that used the exact same word and it translated it as pinch. Mm -hmm. uh, but then they couldn't do that in that hadith. And he was showing how the translators play with the, the language. <clears throat> um, and I also cut out all of the attempts to get that Muslim to actually talk. He, he kept coming on and then and cursing and yelling and, and mm -hmm. such. Um, and I didn't think that that would be appropriate to put in the stream, but I did want to get the idea demonstrate that that he invites people on and uh, he does have good conversations with people from time to time if, if people are nice and reasonable they have good conversations if people come in and they just want to yell he gets rid of them so yeah and uh he has 14.7 thousand subscribers so if he had a little more he would have been pushed out of this video because you had like you had like a, people have been asking about rob christian there's rob christian on this list and we, you didn't include him because he has something like 30,000, 30 some thousand subscribers, right? Yeah, uh, he was in the top 10 of the recommendations. Um, he was kind of like a borderline case mm -hmm. that he, he he's been around a while and a lot of people know him, but mm -hmm. uh, he also isn't like super well known, you know, like the way Christian Prince is. And same idea. He does mm -hmm. a similar style as Christian Prince as well. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, matter of fact, uh, after we're done, I'll go ahead and add a link to Rob Christian as well for anyone who wants to check that out. But yeah, just so everyone knows, these were not we're, we're not giving just here were the most recommended people. Um, there there were people who are recommended who had a ton of people recommending them, but they also already had a ton of followers. And so 
Uh, so we, we geared this more towards uh, people who, who were getting a lot of recommendations and didn't have a lot of didn't have a lot of followers and so, because those are the, those are the people who just probably haven't been uh, you know haven't uh, been around very long or haven't gotten uh, enough exposure and so trying to help the, trying to help them there. Um, all right, so here we have Adam Seeker's channel. Um, he's got Uthman Ibn Farouk is in his best moments. We know Sheikh Uthman has plenty of them. And oops, doesn't look like he's set up his uh, his uh, homepage here because um, yeah, he doesn't have a playlist here. But uh, we could just check out what the uploads are. Uthman Ibn Farouk is Beth. What are G what is Jihad? Part thirteen, and that's a two hour video, and that's part thirteen. So that is uh, a lot of detail there. Uh, a thumbnail is tiny, but it looks like he has Osama Dakdok on there with him. Yeah, that's correct. The What is Jihad series. He's been going through Osama's book on with Osama. Mm -hmm. uh, they've been going through it together, his book on Jihad. And Pakistan is on a blocking spree. What is Jihad? Part 12 with Mani Ibn Farouk. Can't even read the Quran. Ouch. Uh, what is Jihad? <laughs> All right. So 14.7 thousand subscribers for Adam Seeker. Everyone be sure to check out Adam Seeker's channel, uh, especially, and we can say here, we can say, it looks like we can say, if you like Christian Prince, you will almost certainly like Adam Seeker and Rob Christian. So if you've been following Christian Prince for years and you haven't been following Adam Seeker and Rob Christian, uh, looks like they would uh, be very similar format and uh, you, you definitely want to check those out. All right, what do we got next? Uh, well, just real quickly, I, I would agree with that. Um, Adam is known for his long live streams. If by chance you speak Urdu, uh, that channel has even more action than the English channel. He gets like uh, 10 wide of, of Muslims coming up at the same time and, and debating with him, including like actual sheikhs and scholars of Islam. So next up on the list is Deflate. This is another uh, straight apologetics channel. And deflate, I have seen, I don't know, I don't know what he does. I don't know what he's <laughs> doing as far as the algorithm, but he constantly gets recommended to me. So I always see him in recommendations. So um, maybe he should teach a class on, I don't know, titles and thumbnails and descriptions and so on, because uh, the algorithm is definitely picking him up. So, all right, we're going to check out a video by deflate in a nutshell there are three oh, intertwined bad. reasons why ah. you are on firm ground to conclude that the new testament teaches the trinity first because it establishes the divinity of jesus second because it establishes the divinity of the holy spirit and third because it puts those two divine persons alongside god the father and presents all three of them as acting in unity so let's start with passages that talk about the divinity of Jesus. In Mark 2, when a lame man is lowered through the roof, Jesus tells him, Son, your sins are forgiven. With this statement, Jesus clearly implies that he is divine, because only God can forgive sins. This is exactly the reason why the people present at the scene react by saying, Why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Also, in several places in the Gospels, you see people coming to Jesus and worshiping him without him stopping them, which clearly implies that Jesus thinks of himself as being God rather than merely human. Compare that to Acts 14, where Paul and Barnabas are worshiped by a crowd in Lystra, to which they object, friends, why are you doing this? We too are only human like you. There are also, of course, very explicit references to the divinity of Jesus, such as Colossians, where you read that by Jesus all things were created and that in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. Now let's turn to the Holy Spirit. One of the most prominent passages that teach his divinity is Acts 5. In the story of Ananias and Sapphira, the married couple in the first church who sell their property and bring only part of the proceeds to the apostles for distribution among the poor, under the pretense that they are handing over all of the money. Peter confronts them and says, Why is it that you have contrived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to man, but to God. Four verses later, Peter goes on to say, How is it that you have agreed together to test the Spirit of the Lord? 
In other words, the Spirit of the Lord, whom Ananias and Sapphira tested, is identified with God to whom they lied. Now, critics sometimes object and say, but the word Trinity isn't found in the New Testament. Yes, that's right. But note that the Bible doesn't mention the words omniscience or omnipotence either. Yet the text repeatedly teaches that God has these attributes, even though it never uses the two words omniscience and omnipotence with which we capture them. The same applies to the Trinity. Even though you can't find the term as such on any page of the New Testament, the text does teach very clearly and repeatedly that Jesus is divine, that the Spirit is divine, and that these two and God the Father act in unity with one another. <coughs> this state of affairs is exactly what the term Trinity captures, namely that God exists as three persons within the unity of one. Uh, you see his shirt there? I can't quite make it out. It says book talk, but when he when at first it, since the, the bottoms of the letters are are cut off at first, I thought it said booty talk, and I was <laughs> like, man, what kind of pervert, <laughs> what kind of pervert are people recommending here, talking about his his booty talk? <laughs> but yes, then I saw when he raised up a little, it looks like book talk, book talk. So that's just some nerd stuff right there. Uh, Mike Winger uh, pointed out, uh, he said, uh, Deflate has some great stuff. And Mike Winger got a ton of recommendations, right? Yeah, I think he was about third or fourth overall on the list. Yeah, so he had, but he was one of the ones who got canceled because he already has a ton of viewers. Yeah, I love I love Mike Winger. He's probably my favorite uh, non islamic content christian channel um but he has uh i think four hundred thousand subscribers something like that so not, by no means a small channel yeah you notice notice what he did he came in and said oh i'll just sit here and have the glasses in front of my bookcase and uh and uh just roll with that I wonder where he got that idea right um uh, it worked i mean when i first saw his channel he only had like maybe twenty thousand subscribers so by copying you, he's managed to to gain a lot of subscribers. Yeah, he's got all, he's got a ton of them. Their nickname is Wingalings. His his his, okay. his subscriber community. They're called Wingalings. We call them Wingalings. Wingalings. Right. And he's saying he's saying that he got canceled. <laughs> he got canceled for having too many subscribers. Uh, all right, but yeah, everyone, uh, uh, if you're not if if you're not subscribed to Mike Winger and you uh, like live streams, he's one of the guys who like uh, I mean really prepares his videos, like spends a lot of time going into a lot of depth, uh, spends a lot of time reading all the relevant materials on it, then uh, discussing it. So um, check this out. Um, but uh, deflate very uh, very well made videos here going through apologetics. Um, issues and let's go ahead and check out the let's go ahead and check out his channel here. So deflate um, eighteen thousand subscribers. So he's almost he was almost out of this live stream. Yeah, I think that he had the most of anyone that made it. Um, but on the other hand, it, since it wasn't a channel about Islam, I thought there's a gr much greater chance that people wouldn't know about it. As far I mean, notice he's got uh, he's got good thumbnails here. He's got good thumbnails because again, you always want to, when, when the algorithm keeps recommending a person's videos to you, it's, it's the algorithms taking into account things that you've watched in the past, but also, you know, things like click through rate, how many people see the, see the video and then click on it and so on. So, um, he's doing some stuff right here. And so I think this guy's going to keep, uh, growing. I think he's going to, I think he's going to keep expanding like without any uh, recommendations from me, but yeah, looks like he's, it, it's basically good cut. You want good content. You want well-made videos and you want good, you want good titles and thumbnails. And so looks like he's doing it all correctly. All right. Uh, final thoughts on deflate. Yeah, I wasn't familiar with this channel before the recommendations, but uh, I watched several of the videos and I was very impressed with the editing and the pacing as well as the arguments. And it looks like he has a combination of live stream Q&A interviews and uh, with very interesting guests in these shorter, well edited videos. So he's definitely on his way. All right, guys. So uh, and just one one other quick right. note. The 
the volume thing, that was my bad. I, I think that it accidentally got doubled up when I put it in the editing software because uh, the original is not like that. Uh, yeah, don't worry about that. I, I can I can adjust stuff once we're in there, but I have to just hear it a little bit. But that's that's pretty uh, that's pretty standard for video clips to have different volume levels. Um, all right, so that's that's five of the six. So who do we have last? So the last one is Lloyd de Jong. Uh, he had the lowest subscribers of anyone to make the list, and he was tied for uh, fourth place, I guess, with Deflate for the the most recommendations. After I took out the channels that you know had massive numbers of subscribers. Okay, so low number of subscribers, but still a lot of people recommending him. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. Um, exactly. All right, so let's go ahead and check out. Let's go ahead and check out a clip from Lloyd. Here we go. So today, oh, that's a little I'm low. going to be talking about Sharia law. I need to demystify and explain what Sharia law is and explain its importance in Islam. Yeah, explain it. When you only study the Quran and the Hadith, you do not get the full picture. You get a partial, a tiny picture of Islam. There's a chapter in the Sharia called Holding One's Tongue. It's about keeping secrets. It's about knowing when not to speak. And it says, do not assist one another in sin and aggression. Now, understand, these meanings may be slightly ambiguous, right? But also, do not let your brother do something that would bring shame on Islam, right? that would break the law of Islam. So, for instance, speak of giving, giving directions to wrongdoers, showing the way to policemen and tyrants when they are going to commit injustice and corruption. 2015, Bataclan Massacre. Those men that committed that atrocity were in Molenbeek in Belgium. For two months, no one for a long time told the police where they were. Why? Because they're following the Sharia law. Because showing the way to policemen when they're going to commit injustice and corruption. Why? Because those Muslims did not commit an atrocity. They were following the law of Allah. They were doing good. They were commanding the right and they were forbidding the wrong. Understand? So... Therefore, the policemen who would arrest them are the ones who are going to commit injustice. But also notice here, sin and aggression, right? Something that is wrong where you must hold your tongue is it is wrong to teach questions of sacred law to those learning it in bad faith. So right now I'm teaching it in bad faith and you as my audience are learning it in bad faith because you are not learning it to apply the knowledge in your lives, i.e. to become a Muslim. So Dean embodies perspectives on existence, that's your Akida, your life, society, and socio-political system, governance. Right? Islam is a complete and a competing ideology and a system of life and society, like communism. Right? A political, ideological system. For Muslims, Islam is a superior ideology that towers over other isms, like capitalism, and the resultant socio-political systems. It is a political framework for managing mankind's affairs. Islam combines civil, moral, and ritual law. Right? There's very little distinction between them, whereas, of course, we make these differences. Within, within Judaism, they make the differences between the ritual, the moral, and the civil law. And, of course, in Christianity, we only have the moral law. Jesus did not legislate parking tickets and how to you know, give fines to people. All right, so that's look. Before I forget, I just saw a comment over here from two Messianic Jews. Um, they said his video "Atheism is not a lack of belief." This is from this is from a, a little earlier. He said his his video "Atheism is not a lack of belief." Sorry, atheists is impressive. Uh, I only put this up because two Messianic Jews um, is a channel that people should be following. I've known these guys for uh, <clears throat> uh, for a while. These are younger guys. And for, for people, even people who, um, uh, you know, who've been in apologetics for a while, if you think of, uh, you know, Messianic Jew, it's basically Michael Brown. That, that's, it's like the one guy, you know, you think of. And so uh, check, check out the channel to Messianic Jews. I will, I will add that later into the description box, link to their channel. I keep, I keep meaning to have them on. We keep, uh, I'm too massively disorganized. Like we've planned to do things in the past and, uh, just somehow not gotten around to it, but uh, check out their channel. Now back to um, back to Lloyd. Yeah, so I've known Lloyd for a long time. He's been the major contributor to my channel. 
the the recommendations were, were based just on the data, but he did make the, the top five. Um, he, you like to describe Sam as the Assyrian encyclopedia. I describe Lloyd as the Sharia encyclopedia. He has a lot of expertise in Sharia. He comes from a security background. He worked in the Middle East for more than a decade in counterterrorism type efforts. So he has a um, you know, a, a deep understanding of the culture. He has a deep understanding of the way Muslims think. And he also is very talented at research. He comes up with these uh, great finds that no one else seems to come across. Um, actually, one of his most popular videos was looking at uh, the Philistines and not about Sharia at all. Um, that's, um, that's actually, uh, that's what we call Oh, I'm not sure if that's that would qualify as niche content, um, but the idea is, uh, whenever you're putting out content, there's there's a supply factor and a demand factor. So if you say, "Hey, I want to go into apologetics and I want to uh, defend the existence of God," well, that's cool. But there are you know there are who knows how many tens of thousands of videos defending the existence of God, and so there's already a lot of competition with it. Whereas if you make a good video discussing the Philistines. You don't have a lot of competition there, so everyone who's everyone who's looking up the Philistines for something will probably come across your content. So content, keep, keep that in mind, everyone. These are, these are these are your pro tips here. These are your pro tips. If you are the only source of information on something, like I've made videos in the past where when I was putting it out, I was like, people don't know this stuff. Like who killed Muhammad, right? I put out my video, who killed Muhammad? It's got a couple million views or something like that, but I knew, hey, you know, there are a few there are a few of us apologists who know this information about Muhammad, but no one's really put it in packed it all into a video and and put it out there the same thing with uh uh muhammad ali and pointing out who he was actually named after and that guy's background i was like people just people just don't know this the point here is um when you are loading content onto youtube when you're making a youtube video you should be thinking uh how many videos are doing the same thing out there doesn't mean you shouldn't make it even if they're even if there are already a hundred thousand videos on the on the topic uh, but you got to be asking yourself, why are people going to watch my video? Um, what am I adding to this discussion? But in those situations where you're like, oh, I've got something people don't know about, that's 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 going to help your video take off if, if you're the one who's who's got a video on a, on a particular topic. Um, so, Lloyd's your, so Lloyd's your buddy here. Um, going back, I think I've gotten to the bottom of his channel. Oh, so he's yeah, actually that, he's actually been yeah, on a great. while, but it's all you, totally videos, different stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, he had a channel about uh, security type issues, uh, self defense and whatnot, before he started talking about Islam. So at well, the, the bottom there, you're at the, the, the issues are kind of connected, right? <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed. <laughs> All right. So uh, Lloyd, you're saying this guy has some serious brain power and knowledge, and yet has four thousand four hundred subscribers. So. Uh, final thoughts on why people should subscribe to Lloyd here. Yeah, I mean, he was the smallest channel to, to make the list. Clearly, um, his content is starting to catch on. So you get in now and you're on the ground floor. All right. So um, everyone, those are the channels that uh, keep, keep in mind. There were channels who had you know, like Mike Winger and Christian Prince, there were established channels that did have a ton of people recommending them that we did not want to include because they already, people already know about them. And there were, there were many more channels that were recommended that don't have followers and, you know, that don't have a ton of followers and so on. Um, so we looked for that sort of sweet spot. Um, people who were underrated given the quality of their content. Um, and so we recommended these six channels. We could have given many, many more, but the point is, if I come on here, if we come on here and say, hey, here are 50 channels to follow, guess what? People aren't following most of those channels and so on. If we say here are five or six or something like that, then hopefully we can, uh, we can help some, some channels out. Um, all right, so that's our, that's our list. Absolutely. I did want to give one personal recommendation. We don't have a video to look at it. Um, the third apology. Uh, he's a pretty, he's relatively, he's much smaller. He's like at 2,000 subscribers. But I personally find his content to be quite good. 
Uh, he has more of a video essay style, and he has these very deep intellectual thoughts about things. Um, and I, I just think that, and he's very young. He, he just recently graduated from college. So I think that, you know, that's someone to look to for the future of apologetics. Um, and I'm looking, he is, uh, he's dealing with uh, a lot of Islamic issues. Um, his most recent video, that I'm talking about the third apology. Uh, I'll add that to the description box as well. But his most recent vis video is an interview with uh, Jay Warner Wallace, whom I've had on this channel. Uh, lots of content dealing with Islam, Zakir Naik, um, I see Allah condemns Muhammad, um, Jesus is greater than Muhammad, the high cost of using the Islamophobia card, so uh, yeah, we didn't, we don't, uh, I'll check, I'll check out some of these, see if I can, see if I can uh, recommend some content. Um, all right, so that's what we wanted to cover in this video. Uh, anything else? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I got a couple housekeeping measures for you. So in, uh, I believe it was January, maybe February, I issued a debate challenge to you to debate the topic whether Muhammad was a prophet with me taking the the yes side, that I would argue that he is a prophet. Obviously, I wouldn't argue for it in the way that Muslims would like, but I would argue in a way that he is a prophet. <clears throat> would you still be, would you be interested in doing that debate at some point in the future? Um, it's possible. My, my only, my only concern is that as soon as people say it and they realize it's kind of a joke, they say, uh, oh, you see, he can't debate a real Muslim, even though I've been in like 80 debates with, with Muslims. <laughs> um, there, there is this tendency to just ignore the purpose and just say, you see now, now they're doing fake debates and them running to each other and saying, you see, it's a fake debate. It's not real. It's not real. The guy's pretending to be a Muslim to make these arguments and so on. I don't know where you'd be going with that, but if it, I mean, it would be hilarious to have arguments like, uh, you know, Muhammad's great, mo like some of the arguments we read about in the early Muslim sources that were so incredibly persuasive to people. He's got this giant mole on his back and that's the seal of the, that's how you spot a prophet. He's got a giant mole on his back and stuff. You look at this stuff, you're going, are you insane? But you don't see Muslims using this stuff anymore, even though, I mean, that was the basis for some of their faith early on was was things like that. Uh, but yeah, we'd have to, yeah, I'd have to think about that sort of in the in the future, but. Sure, uh, let me just give you my thesis statement. And that's that Muhammad is so incompetent that he, no one would have voluntarily followed him. So he must have had some sort of supernatural help. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That, that's good. Like <laughs> that, that's similar to the approach I take in, in debates uh, about whether Muhammad existed. But it's weird because I actually I actually believe this is how one of the main reason we we know Muhammad existed is no one would have invented this nonsense about about some guy. Um, and, you know, the question is, is that is that persuasive enough to over, you know, overwhelm the lack of sources, the lack of early sources? And it kind of it kind of depends on how much stock you put into uh, embarrassing testimony. But, um, yeah, that would be that would probably be a good good direction to go for uh, for Muhammad. Uh, keep it. Keep, keep in keep in mind, you don't you don't have to wait for me to, to do something like that. You, I know. Could, you could just make a video <laughs> saying, you know, 100 percent proof that Muhammad is a prophet. And, uh, and then give yeah, him. absolutely. I mean, if the debate never happens, then I'll definitely put it out in a different format. It's an idea that I had for a while, you know, this um, serious in a sense mm -hmm. argument, but not an argument that any Muslim could accept because it mm -hmm. makes it, Muhammad look super bad in the process. Yeah, he's not a he doesn't look very good. So then the other housekeeping matter I have for you is I also put out a video suggesting that instead of actually <clears throat> deleting your channel, that you just delete all the content and then you either give the channel, I suggested to Anthony Rogers, or you sell the channel. And of course, I suggested to myself for that. Um, yeah, and you, I, I, wa I watched your video. I watched your video specifically because you, you asked me to watch it in the uh in the email about this uh about this live stream and so it was cool because when i when i said hey uh let's do this live stream it was oh i remember i agreed in the past to to work with thaddeus on something so and then you mentioned it said hey two birds with one stone and then 
uh, and but then you said it in that video. You said it in the video. So I clicked on the video, and then you said it in the video. You said, "Hey, you said you you said we'd do something together. So <laughs> this could be it." So anyway, worked out perfectly. Anyway, you you made a good case for, for anyone who doesn't know what's been going on. I mean, I'm sure if you're watching here, you know, uh, I'm deleting uh, my channel. I'm scheduled to delete my channel on July 4th. Um, most of the people who say, no, what a stupid idea, did not watch the videos that I put out explaining what I'm doing. You just, and everyone, I mean, a bunch of those people seem to think, I'm just leaving everything and going over here and I'm gonna be, a, be on a website. Not my plan at all. If that were my plan, I would say yes. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. That's 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 not what I'm doing. Um, but an important part of future plans involves destroying and deleting this channel. Just sort of getting it all out of the way. It's too much of a it's too much of a hassle type situation. And Thaddeus, you made a really good case for selling it you're like hey people already gave you the money to fund stuff but you can always use some more money in a you know am i right and it's actually something in my head because you know i actually add up okay here's how much i need for this here's how much i need for this and so i ask people to support that and then they give me way more than i asked for and i think haha i've got way more than i need but i know from history i know from the history of my life as soon as i get started all these additional things are going to come into play and it's all it's all, it's all going to cost piles of money i just know that from experience uh and so you gave the right pitch what you underestimated <laughs> what you underestimated in in your video in your <laughs> in your case for why i should uh uh give away the channel or sell the channel um and have people delete the videos there's a reason for deleting the videos ladies and gentlemen there's a there's a purpose you agree that there's a reason for deleting the content right there's an important role that all of this plays. If you don't know what it is and you're just going, no, keep it all as an archive, you did not listen to anything I said. And what you're telling me, I'm not talking to Thaddeus now, I'm talking to those of you who say, just keep the channel as an archive. You did not under you you did not watch anything I said or did not understand it because there is a very important reason for deleting the channel as far as being on the internet for a long period of time. Um, the way they are coming at this channel, they will ban you forever, period. Um, and then you then you can't be on ever again. So that's what some of you are saying when you say, keep it as an archive. Great, you're saying, hey, three, four, five months from now, be banned completely forever. Um, so there's a reason for taking a different approach. I've got a way to beat the system. What Thaddeus is saying is he's got a solution that takes into account everything I've said and doesn't involve completely deleting the channel. Just delete the content, give it to someone else or sell it or sell it to Thaddeus and then keep it as a channel. And then that person then has all those, has, has all, all those subscribers and so on. And so the only, the only flaw there is you underestimate how hilarious I think it would be to delete my channel. <laughs> so I just think it's, I know other people don't think, don't think like this. If you're, if, and I don't know if it's a psychopath thing or whatever. Uh, I think it would be hilarious. I think it's just hilarious to take something and then destroy it in front of everyone to show <laughs> that guys you shouldn't be putting your trust in it. It, you can do this with anything i would think it's funny right if like if some rich guy went out and bought a lamborghini and then just smashed it to pieces or something i would think that's uh, that's that's hilarious right guys i just bought a lamborghini i do not need this lamborghini get rid of this lamborghini and just, just destroy it I would, I would think that's hilarious anyway so there, there's this added there's this added thing of uh I don't know. I think people are way too attached to things. And uh, if it were me, I would probably delete my channel every couple of years just to get a fresh start, uh, just to get a fresh, just to, to start over and get a, a fresh. Start. But I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. So you made a you made a good case. And uh, earlier today, I would still I was I'm granting the the possibility that something could change my mind because, you know, God could give me a sign or something like that. Or someone can make a, you know, an airtight case, but I was still like, you know, 99 to one in favor of deleting my channel. The only, the only, <laughs> the only serious doubt I had just about that was Hatun, uh, Hatun just getting uh, her Quran stolen, a Quran that I gave her as a gift stolen. And then people cheering, people cheering for her getting arrested because she got she got strong armed, and then I was just thinking, man, it'd be hilarious to just give Hatun my channel, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, 
so I was thinking that, but then, but then I was thinking, oh, okay. After I thought that, I was like, oh, okay, well, I guess it's, I guess it's possible to get my, to get my check. But at the same time, DCCI has like fifty thousand subscribers, so they don't exactly, they don't exactly need my help. Yeah, I think they might have been in the top ten as well. It's definitely near the top ten, if not in it. Um, another channel. Yeah, it looks like number seven. I just put up my list. So it's technically number seven. Um, so it would have made this list if we were just looking at all channels, but definitely too large for today. All right. So given given uh, given my response to your video, any any final thoughts on that? <laughs> I know that. Keep in mind, I know this will sound stupid to to everyone. I just want to. Um, your average person would think that it's not funny at all to destroy something that you've worked 13 years on. Um, I've, I've just been like that my entire life. And I don't think it makes you'd think that someone live, who lives life like that is going to is going to it's just going to be one big disaster. But it's cool because every time you get yourself into the situation, just burn everything to the ground, it forces you to be extra awesome in what you're taking off next because everyone is saying you just screwed up everything. There's no way you can make it back from this now. You just made the dumbest decision ever. And then so it forces you to go, oh, really? Oh, really? You think that's going to you think that's going to stop the dizzle? You think that's going to stop the dizzle people? So um, it actually it actually works out. Like, I have no doubt I'm about to put out some of the greatest content that's ever been seen in the history of YouTube, even better than all the other content uh, I've put out over the years. But uh, what, what, are your, what are your 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 thoughts on this? That is. Yeah, I, I'd say that's, you know, that's a fair response. That's a, a good response. Um, you know, I, I'd suggest continue to, to think it over and maybe consider that if you are not able to delete your channel during that live, live stream, if you had to delete it, it you know, an hour later or whatever, maybe then reconsider. And I'm here. <laughs> so, uh, and, and ju ju just so you know, Thaddeus, as soon as you started suggesting bidding, other people started saying, whatever he bids, we will outbid him. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are people offering giant piles of money uh, for, uh, for, for, the, for the channel here. Um, yeah, Bob told me he was going to outbid. Me, Bob, so. Bob, Bob, Bob put in a Bob put in. <laughs> Bob said he'd outbid you on on, on anything. <laughs> hey, but by the, you you know Bob. Yeah, uh, he has a monthly fellowship for YouTube apologists, and I've been participating in that. What uh, you ever think about doing like a super group channel? Uh, you know what I'm talking about. That? You know what I'm talking about, like yeah. super group, like 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 you pick like four or five people and you you guys all post on a channel yeah i that idea never occurred to me but I, I get what you're saying very interesting idea i'm just i'm just saying because i mean part of the problem is i don't want to be like uh oh here here thaddeus here's the channel uh, i'll accept your bid uh and not let bob outbid you and then like but mm -hmm. i like i like bob you know what i mean so it's <laughs> right kinda, <laughs> Well, 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 there you go. Uh, Bob and I can go in together and, and, you know, we can get anyone else who, who wants to contribute some money to and, and we can all be a super group on the well, here, former here, Act 17 Apologetics. <laughs> here's, here's the thing. Uh, I don't want to just because, again, I know for a fact I uh, it, it is a problem. Um, I always massively underestimate how much time something is going to take. I always massively underestimate how much money things are going to cost. Um, it, like, just so everyone knows, I mean, I think it's a mental defect because I'm the guy who sits there watching the MMA fight going, man, I could take these guys. <laughs> I just I, I just hit him like that right when he came in. And I know I know it's false, right? I know I can't do it, but that's how I feel. I feel like none of these guys could, could stop me and so on. So I'd like these delusions of indestructibility and so on. So uh, I always seriously underestimate what it's going to take to to get stuff done so i actually do not <laughs> i actually wouldn't want to turn money down at the same time i'm not sure i wouldn't want to bankrupt a bunch of apologists unless you guys just have massive uh stacks of of cash sitting around uh i bef just so you know i also <laughs> I also do, I, I'm also kind of spur of the moment. Um, 
I have gotten more used to changing my mind once I hit mid 40s. Once I hit mid 40s, it just sort of changed all of a sudden. Um, because back in the day, you once I dis, once I set my mind on something, you would literally have to saw my head off to get me to stop because there was there was nothing that was that was going to stop me. Uh, I'm going to blurt this out now without seriously thinking about it. If you wanted to run the ch and again, this is only because the people with tattoo yesterday ticked me off enough to say, how can I, how can I do something that will annoy them? And, uh, <laughs> giving Hatun more access to something would, uh, would, would help that. If you wanted to put together a little super group of like four or five people who can all use the channel, it doesn't mean they're posting all their content. I think it's good to have your own channels. And then like, you know, once a week or something like that, each person, you know, tosses something into the mix or something like that. Um, man, I feel like I'm just going to change my mind as soon as I stop, but I, it'll be too late. Cause I will have said, I will have said it. And then I will be, <laughs> and then I'll feel, and then I will feel bound to, a, to stick with my deal. Uh, if you wanted to take the channel, stick with your deal, as far as you know, deleting the content, except for maybe, let's say 10 views. If you're, if you're doing it as a super group, you can actually leave a few things up like Nabil's testimony, uh, a couple of the, the higher, a couple of the, a couple of the videos that have performed long, long term, uh, and still get lots of views just to keep things going. Uh, I would take your introductory bid. You run the channel but you put together a super group, keep around 10 of my videos that still get lots of views and you guys can run it as a, as a super group. Um, I could, I could, I could live with that, but <laughs> I know as soon as I'm not live, I'm going to change my mind. But, uh, <laughs> uh, any thoughts on that? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I say that's a great idea. That's actually better than my idea of giving it or, or selling it to me is making it a, you know, a community effort that, uh, you know, we each put up, say, a quarter of our content here and the other three quarters on our own channel or whatever the exact amount and uh, use it as a, a um, apologetics community and apologetics empire, if you will. Um. I know we have comments. Sarah says, "Would David still be able to still be able to be permanently banned from YouTube, even if others own the channel?" No. No, that's the point. Um, oh. Yeah. To, to be clear, David would sign over legal ownership of it, so YouTube could not ban him. Uh, they could only ban whoever was the owner, which would presume possibly be me. So <laughs> they could ban me, I suppose, but they couldn't ban David. Uh, yeah, it's the channel, it's the channel, um, yeah, it's whoever owns the channel, uh, is in trouble if the channel gets banned. Um, Anna says, I hope D Wood has prayed about this. I have, uh, thought about it. Actually had the desire to delete my channel and start over, uh, for years. Didn't cause there was too much cool stuff happening. And so it was with the, with the, with the YouTube annoying me and the, the trust and safety team annoy me. It was just kind of pushing me, pushing me over the edge uh, a little bit. Right. So I already kind of wanted to do that. Um, oh, look, we see the problem here. Adam Seeker says, Hey David, you run it and allow others to post videos on it. Um, no, Adam, that was the point. I need to get away <laughs> from this channel because I'll, I'll break it down in a nutshell for everyone. Uh, even though I've explained it in videos before. <clears throat> the YouTube rule is if you get banned on one channel, you're banned on all of your channels. That's, that's the official rule. Some people, some people don't follow that rule. They'll, they'll, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm suspended for a week over here. So I'll go post over here. Uh, if they catch you doing that, they give you a strike. They give you a, they give you an extra strike. Um, and if they just totally ban you for one channel, they'll just ban you. You're not allowed to have, you're not allowed to be on YouTube anymore. I've come up with a solution to all of that to make everything I'm doing unbannable. So the safe content, uh, maybe I have a YouTube channel and I post my safe content, other stuff that's posted on other platforms. And if people should upload that to YouTube, uh, it's not me doing it. I didn't do it. It wasn't me. 
right? Uh, so yes, it involves it involves destroying this channel. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know what a good idea is. All right. So we, we renamed the channel the Apologetics Empire, and we I I, I have a relationship with Adam. I have a relationship with Hatoon. I have a relationship with Bob. So I, I definitely can get several people involved. I'm sure that no one is going to turn down that opportunity to, to post on this channel. So, All right. So as far as what we're talking about here, are you proposing to buy my channel, you own it, and then you run it as a super group? That would be the proposal. So I'll take the legal ownership uh, aspect, but I, everyone else who is picked to be part of the group, and you could tell me who you want me to... To, to ask to be part of it, but um, whoever is picked, they would have access to, to post, but I would be the legal owner. Um, yeah, and, and I mean, it helps to just have one person who gets final say and stuff like that, and yeah, you'd be the, you'd be the owner, but um, yeah, that makes sense. And no, you don't, but by the way, I mean, if you own it, you don't need to listen to me, but uh, I'll toss you some. Well, I, I just meant, you know, for recommendation. We'll call it recommendations. Yeah, we'll call it recommendations. I, actually, we should be clear that you would not be you would not be telling me what to do because, uh, you know, we don't want YouTube coming back and saying this is just a front. Yeah. So definitely be clear here that it would be my decision as to, to what was posted. And, uh, you know, I would listen to what David had to say if he if he told me anything and he may not even tell me anything i don't know but uh it, i would listen but it would be my decision ultimately all right well um <laughs> man i really want to delete my channel <laughs> <laughs> uh gosh what would i do on july 4th? i guess i could just delete like a thousand plus videos live <laughs> Well, yeah, you could you could have the live stream, you could delete the videos and you could invite uh, a number of us on and we could, you know, discuss what we're going to be doing with the channel. Uh, you could also put up a community poll and see what people want you to do. But I, I bet you it's going to be overwhelmingly not delete. So it probably won't tell you anything you don't already know. Gosh, this is tough. Um because, I mean, keep in mind, I thought about it for a year and a half before I decided, OK, I'm going to delete my channel. And then everyone's saying, don't delete my channel. I'm thinking, ha, 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 guys, don't you realize I already decided and there's no turning back now? <laughs> and then people offering me money and thinking, ha, ha, you think you're going to win me over with money? And then last second, last second, right before you and I do this live stream on, on channels and so on, Hatun gets arrested for having her Quran that I gave her stolen <laughs> right and then me thinking what can i do to annoy people um so i mean by the way when i said like divine sign i don't know if that's a divine sign or something like that but that's the sort of thing i look for because uh the the kind of the only thing that would overwhelm hey this is the this is the path i've chosen and now i'm stuck to it is someone really annoying me and want me wanting to tick them off that's always a uh, for future reference, if for future reference, uh, Thaddeus, uh, if you're ever in a situation where I've decided to do something, you want me to do something else, that's how to that's how to put it. <laughs> <laughs> but David, look what that person but, did over here, and how think how annoying it would be if you did this in response. That's uh, yep. All right. Yeah. So um, let's talk offline. Um, I might have something to say about that. Uh, divine providence as well. I don't want to claim anything on the air, but uh, I have some more information that might be relevant in that, in that regard. All right. I will tentatively lean in that direction with the understanding that other things could happen uh, in the next several days. Um, Absolutely. Because I will be talking to I will be talking to other people like I uh, I want to get Hatun on here in the next couple of days. And I think she said she's available after uh, something like after Tuesday or something like that. So I want to talk to her because keep in mind, keep in mind, I'm saying this here. Um, if Hatun says because I said I'm not sure she she'd want to just have the channel because they, they already have a, a really good channel. If Hatun said, you know what, I just want the whole channel. I'd give it to her. I'd give it to I'd give it to Hatun. 
heartbeat <laughs> just to tick just to tick people off um i do like the idea of a of a super group uh run by you though so um we will uh, tentatively stick with that all right ladies and gentlemen and uh, and i'm yep, and i'm yep, and yep. i'm and i'm going to go back and read through the comments here on what other people are thinking uh because this is this is some of the stuff up when I say I'm deleting my channel, that's because I've thought about it long and hard. When I come up with, hey, hey look, instead do a super group, that's like, that's uh, off the top of my head type stuff. And so there might be things I'm ignoring here. Absolutely. Um, before we sign off, I just wanted to say that the prophecy has come true. I have passed 10,000 subscribers. Oh, nice. So, and it was between three and nine hours, just like I said, whereas the Quran prophecy wasn't actually really fulfilled between three and nine years. So it seems I'm better than Allah. I right. A low bar, I know, but <laughs> it is. I mean, no need to. I don't want to burst your profit bubble, but I mean, pretty much everyone in history was more accurate than Muhammad and uh, and Allah when it comes to the prophecies. Yeah, that that's a fair point. I, I do have to take that into consideration. And just one other announcement: I started a channel a couple days ago, which I called the David Wood Archives with an S, which I'm re-uploading David's videos one at a time. Uh, if if the super group thing happens and you know might change gears there maybe don't want to also be uploading the videos if, if i have legal ownership of this channel but um for right now uh i'll be uploading his videos one at a time try to get the algorithm to repick them up to get them introduced to new people and uh one quick comment from god logic uh he says what's up with the apologetics empire uh, if you're talking about um I don't know, because you were just talking about Apologetics Empire, but then the Apologetics Empire is this thing that I was talking about before, where everyone's going to be translating uh, videos that I post and so on. Uh, but if that's what you're talking about, God Logic, yes, I'm supposed to, I was supposed to record them, uh, I was supposed to record them last week, but the studio ran into some problems, getting all these professionally recorded. Uh, so that got moved to next month. So yeah, that'll be next month. And uh, I'm also making a video, sort of a tutorial on how to make videos for people who in case anyone doesn't know i'm going to put out a video per week for an entire year i'm recording the entire 52 part series uh next month and the idea is i'm going to release the video with the full transcript and people from other uh, uh other countries who speak other languages are going to translate take the transcript uh translate the entire script and then re-record it in their own language. They're gonna do that each week for the entire year so that by the end of the year, we have a full apologetics course dealing with Islam in dozens of other languages. So that was the plan. I talked about it, for, I've been talking about it for a couple of years. Never actually got to doing all the recording. So I'm about to do all the recording now. And once we do that, then uh, I'm making a tutorial video for people on here. Here's how to uh, make videos depending on what you have, because there are people who have access to a studio and can do it in studio. There are people who have access to teleprompters uh, who can do that. Uh, there are people who will just be recording on their cell phones. That's that's what they that's what they have, or or on their their computers or something like that. With the uh, all of that works. All I'm saying, all that works. So it's going to be uh, whatever your situation is, whatever equipment you have access to here's how to make this work best because I've been in all those situations before as far as needing to record. I've been, I've, I've had nothing and I've had awesome equipment. Um, so I've been, in, I've been in everywhere in between. So uh, for people who are new to recording and the good side is for those of you who are, who are interested, uh, if you do the translation work, content is yours. You don't need to give me credit, anything else. If you translate that entire series, those are your videos, your channel, You're free to monetize that, do whatever you want. Uh, once we've got all the scripts, you can put those out as a book in your language. Uh, again, do not need to give me credit. I do not care. Um, if you do the work of the translation, that is that is uh, your content there. So anyway, that's that's coming. That is right around the corner, ladies and gentlemen. So think if you're interested in that stuff. All right. We've gone uh, about half an hour longer than I wanted to go. Um. But it was it was cool because we got to check out the uh, check out the channels and then um, listen to every everyone whine about deleting my channel and so on. Yeah, and we got to see uh, inner view of how your mind works as you're you're thinking about it live. So yeah, that's great. And some yeah, some of that stuff's weird. Like I, 
I mean, I really think it's funny to delete my channel. It's just, I mean, it's like, <laughs> uh, and, and part of it is I know that like, if I delete my channel like 30 years from now, I'll still think that's hilarious. I'll still be, hey, you remember when I deleted my entire channel that I worked on for 13 years? That was funny. Um, yeah. All right. All right. We'll see what happens. All right. Well, thanks to uh, Thaddeus, who in theory may own this channel next week. Awesome. We'll see what happens. All right. Catch up. Uh, everyone, be sure to subscribe to all the channels uh, that I listed. Check out um, the ones you like and the ones you don't. Shame on them for not pleasing you. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Different different people like different kinds of content, so find the ones you like. And uh, there there are a few more people that I wanted to get on here before we go, because I noticed that you didn't have a lot of the Speaker's Corner people um, uh, there, either because they had, you know, they, they already had a lot of followers, but uh, definitely want to get Bob back on and a couple of, uh, a couple of his friends and uh, Hatoon as well. And so, yeah, I, I'll be back here in the next, uh, I'll probably be back a bunch this week. All right, catch y'all later.